All right, I will call the meeting to order at 3 p.m. Open um, certification of open meeting requirements have been met. This meeting was posted, even though, and it was rescheduled so everybody knew. Uh, the, uh, could have a roll call of members. Kevin is here, he's out somewhere. Um, Nutter here. He's here. Well, they are here. Jean, can you hear us? Jean here. Oh, yay, good. Thank you. Golly, you're loud and clear. Um, is there a motion to approve? Has everybody had a chance to read the minutes? Do you have anything? I always look to you, Don. <laughs> I make a motion to approve. Okay. Is, uh, I'll second. I'll oh, approve I'm both sorry, of them. I okay. All right. We are approving the agenda and the meetings. Dawn made the motion. You seconded both yep. of them? Okay, thank you all. Sorry I skipped that. We do have a public comment on the agenda. Hi, Buzz. Uh, does anybody have anything they would like to let us know is going on or anything they wanna say? Because we can't really have people calling in because we're not being televised. At this time, no. Any upcoming events? Anything exciting? Okay. All right, we'll move on to Ann Hempel, who's here to talk about, I invited Ann to come because we've, it has come up about, is there a map for this? Is this on our website? Blah, blah, blah. And so you are the brains behind land records and mapping, so it's all yours. Yeah, so I hear the meetings and I hear someone say, why don't we have this GIS layer? And I, I, I'll send Jeannie a message and say, we do. We do. We absolutely do. It's just maybe not as public as people, you know, well, well as public as it should be. I'm going to start at the beginning, though. In 2016, I was handed all this paperwork from Olin Fem Femright. Fem and he, would, he asked me to create a brochure. And we came up with this. The problem with this, excuse me? Oh, this, I'm sorry. This, yeah. The, pro the problem, yeah, it's the one we're still using. The problem with it is that it gets outdated. You need updated information. So in 2018, I decided to take that information, and I'm going to share my screen now, hopefully. Uh, we'll try that one. Sure. I decided to create a web application that could be updated when needed. So this is up, coming from our Tremplow County website. You can go to the tourism page and pick any one of those, those ideas and you're still gonna land at the same place. So if you pick water, recreation, you'll end up at the same site as Scenic Drives. And then um, it'll load this map up. And it's just an overview of the county with, with a few layers on the side here that you can turn on and off yourself. So if you only want to see water recreation, you can just turn on, click everything else off and turn on the water trail. Um, during COVID, when it was safer at home, we decided to take this a, a step further and put in um, as many businesses as we could with their, their COVID restrictions or hours or anything like that. And then after COVID, we, after the Safer at Home, we, we updated those back to their regular hours and things like that. Um, I'll just show you a few things that I can do with this map when I get the information in. So I like to talk about the Strum Community Trails right here. You see that's a park symbol. You can click on that. You get the, the, it's probably kind of small for you guys to see, the name, the address, um, and then I can add an attachment, which is the trail map that you could, before you went, print it out and, and bring it with you. Mm -hmm. um, we have the golf courses, places to eat, 
grocery stores, gas stations, anything you can think of, um, churches, cemeteries. And I know we were talking, everyone was talking about the water trail and canoe landings. Is that the lobby? Okay. Yes, that is the lobby. So if we go to Whitehall, we go down to the park, here's a symbol for your canoe landing, your water access. And here's the water trail. And from this point to the next, the next landing is eight, I, I know you probably can't see this tiny print, it's eight miles. When you enlarge it on your own computer, you can see it. Yes. Yeah. And then I'm following that, I'm following the river, following the river, I'll zoom out a little. And here we are in Independence, Four Seasons Park. And it's that Argus thing, map you're talking about, the Argus map, the website, awesome. Um, and, then, and then you can um, go to the next segment. Uh, that might be eight miles all the way to Petrick. I might have to fix that. Um, so here's what we did for the crossroad landing, which is not named that. It's the Elk Rod and Gun Club canoe landing. We went out and took a picture. That's what you see. You see a canoe with the word landing on there. And then we have one more photo just of the sign. So we have the ability to add photos, to add PDFs, anything you'd want to attach to that. And Anne, is this mobile friendly or just on the website? It is. I have a QR code right here. Wonderful. Um, I, it's not as pretty on a mobile phone, but it, you can still use it. Mm -hmm. um, another popular one is the trout streams. People want to know where they can go fishing. I think there's, so here's, here's a trout stream and here's where you can, where you can access it. The person right there? Yep. Yeah. Yep, that's what that asks, yeah. Parking. Um, the other thing you can do, you can do this yourself, make it look the way you want. So you could turn on imagery if you wanted to see it. It's just. Any bridge that goes over public waterways in Wisconsin too is, is access. So like any road that goes over a waterway, that'll be an access point for cultures. I love that you can look at the topography in different manners on this map. Yeah, you, that's up to you to pick right, when, you, right. when you're using this yourself. That's a good question. In Beacon it does. In Beacon it would, but not, not, I don't think, I probably could add that to this. It, I mean, in a snap of a finger. I'm getting that as, you know, say, County Trump X, you go out a mile and a half. You know, mm -hmm. Instead of trying to figure out if there's no proper signage. Right. It's an easement, but if you take, you know, 44 degrees north, you, yep. you got a general idea because most cell phones got that now. Yep, absolutely. Um, and that, I remember hearing someone say we should highlight Perot Park a little more. I should have brought a mouse pad. This isn't the easiest. Um, so we, have the, we also have water access down there marked. And then... Um, you can click and, and get to the Pro State Park map. Um, strum trails, water trails. There's one other thing. So I don't want people to think that I'm picking or we're picking any business on our own. If you wanted your business added, you can go to this identifier or the inf information button um, and click there. And it'll open up a survey where you can add in your business name. Um, you can pick the type of business. 
um, address, phone number, your website, business hours, any special services or any instructions. Um, this goes to me before it goes out there. So you can add, <laughs> I say that because you can add pictures. Um, it's that easy. You just add a picture and then, and then you have to agree that you're the owner and submit it and then I'll review it and add it to the map. That's so cool. Yes. So Buzz has a question. Sure. And back to those trout streams. Yes. Does it differentiate the ones that have an easement where you can actually walk on the bank versus those ones the, are the ones I have mapped are the, the ones we got from the easements, okay, because yep. yeah, you can only walk it gain access if they don't have an easement if your feet are wet. Yep, these are the ones, yep, and um, we got the information from, is it Trout Unlimited? Mm -hmm. Hop in. And you gotta wait out the day. <laughs> Buzz, I know you had a lot of questions about mapping. Is this helpful? Is this Yeah, answer? I haven't played with it yet. I'll have to get on there and play with it. And okay. Now it is, you know, and using it is one thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty easy, Ann. It's pretty user it friendly. It is really easy. Yeah, just to, you just have to people practice. Google, Google water trails Trempolo County. Does this come up then? That's a good question. Yeah, because that's think, what they're going to do. I, I, I think. I think what would be helpful too. I'll check right now. And we just need to put a little bit more work into it. Is if. Adding adding links or you know that would maybe generate like a, a printed map. I mean I know you can print a map off of this, but if I just wanted to see water trails, not with all the additional layers, if we had one we, map, we have printed maps. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying is it, we, just to make it easier. We have them in, in the office. I give yeah. Jack a stack of them. We have. I mean, there's just such a ton of information here. It's really great. The easier we can make it like linking off of a website because I know some people when they see all of that those layers of data it just kind of gets yeah like I said you overload. can you can turn those on and off yourself mm -hmm. right here when you open it um the the last thing I do I yes I encourage people to play around with it if the you go oh, I'm sorry no nope. if you google water trails Tremplow County you can it'll take you to um, you can click on water recreation on our tourism site and it's all right there. Okay. There's one before it related to Pearl State Park, so we're the second one down. Because Pearl has some voyagers. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's, you know, that's yeah. easy for people. Yeah, this is cool. I just, you have to be kind of smart to navigate it, honestly. The, the, so. the last thing I did want to highlight before, and you guys can ask questions or tell me what to do with it. Um, this is the amount of users we had in the last year. Um, it says an average about 953 requests per day. So that's someone clicking on the map asking for that pop-up information. 900 and some per day? Yep. Wow, 348,000 in the past year have, wow, have that's accessed really this amazing. website. And almost 1,000 just per day. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I can go day by day. Average request is almost a thousand. Just average yep. one. Wow. Yep. That's pretty. I can see it. I can see it goes way up around hunting time. Yeah. <laughs> public, public hunting ground. Yeah. Well, I was thinking that was when people going out shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Thanksgiving time. A combination of both. Names. And this is Jean. Hi, Jean. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank you for all your hard work because you always go above and beyond, and um, it's very much appreciated. Um, Dave, would this be something that a letter from uh, you could go out to the business associations, the chambers, yeah. the cities, towns, and villages with this information, with uh, working with Anne to provide them? Um, with the information that a business could upload um, their information if they wanted to, and of course not overwhelm and either. But if this is something that's available for the communities and there wouldn't be a cost, um, yeah, it, that it would be beneficial to the members of our county. Yes, we can absolutely do that. In fact, I I was thinking. We could do letters, but we could also, I have, a, I have an economic development 
Facebook page, and we could add that there, <clears throat> and I could certainly put together a press release. So um, that's an excellent suggestion. I already have that written down, and I, I think we'll move forward with that. Um, I guess I was sort of vaguely aware that we had business listings on there, but um, yeah, businesses, uh, tr tourism attractions, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, we could even put pins yeah, in there. Could even put pins in there for festivals. You know, if you want to add like special yeah, event layer yeah. two, you know, we could add all of the community festivals and Ashley for the arts and that type of thing too. So, is Champions listed? I was just asking for uh, <laughs> for Lori. Well, I should say. Yeah, a lot of stuff in Strong, too. And another good reason for a website specifically for tourism economic development, I mean, obviously keep it on the counties, but as we move forward with a new website for tourism economic development, this could hit you right off the bat, um, which would be fabulous and get more requests. And this is wonderful, the, the uh, amount of information, the 3,480 um, 911 per year is just wonderful for outdoor yeah. recreation. Um, yeah, David, is there, do we have an email list or do we just have a snail mail list pretty much for? Uh, we don't. We have Outer, and okay. that's something that uh, I've been sure. slowly trying to build out. Um, we actually have another reason that we may need to put that together anyways, and that sure. is um, as we move forward with the group. As we move forward with the visit, Eau Claire project and building out that day trip page we need to wait have find a way to communicate with the businesses and attractions so it's actually gonna be the same audience mm -hmm. more or less because yeah. so. i think that'd be super simple yep um, with ann's little click on information everyone would do that because it's yep. it's quite simple yep and, and i i know we do that for a lot of our associations that we manage it's not too tedious to just look and make sure. That yeah, Becky and I. Anything bad? On there. <laughs> that, that's why I say I have to review it first. You want to review the photographs? Yes. <laughs> yeah, Becky and I have talked about uh, and and prior to our prioritizing putting together a list of tourism assets. So it would be all those tourism related type businesses, attractions, etc. So this would be a little broader than that. Um, but a lot of intersect. I mean, there's even a grocery store. You could say, well, it's not really a tourism business, but it is. It is. Sure. So people will look for it or want to know how yep. far something is from it. <laughs> yeah, Robbie's shelves are empty during deer hunting season. Champions is indeed on here. It is on. Did you see With it? With your phone she number. It. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. She showed it. Oh, did you? Oh, I didn't. I'm, I'm, it no, was on your plan. She, right. <laughs> she just had it up there for everybody to see. I didn't even I, notice. I do everything in marketing at Champions every single day. So, no, I do not. <laughs> That's a broad face lie. lie. <laughs> yeah. So, great. I'll tell my girls. <laughs> And I guess the other comment I'd have, we have another river that transects the county that we should think about at some point putting into the water trail, and that's the buffalo up yep. north. Yep. Oh, yeah. Right in my old backyard. Yep. I will show you. I didn't see it highlighted up there. It might not be as a water trail. So that does go through my backyard, and they go <laughs> through. through they backyard. go through, and they clean it up every year. And about a week later, there's a flood, and it's all the trees fall back in there so okay. people walk it they walk it and fish it but um i've seen people just walking on the shore with their kayak or on the yeah on the mm -hmm. side with their kayak this just doesn't want to give me one second when i went to a meeting with scrum rod and gun they had told me that they had went through an initiative of river cleanup for three years and uh -huh. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So hard. it's harder to get. Yep. I do not have as a water trail. Um, I can certainly add it. It would be a cinch. I don't know if we want to or not. It's up there, but if it's not open, uh, you can. You it, it's not easily open. It's a good challenge to do it. I did. I did put a picture of my dog enjoying the river in there. <laughs> That's good. Bubbles in the water. That's a good picture. <laughs> sometimes that water is just like normal, and sometimes it's unbelievably flooded, and it's a tricky yeah, little it's area. Just water, yeah. 
You know, one thing I thought that would be kind of fun is to have people submit just photos of where they are in the county and, you know. Super cool, yes. So I could try and figure something like that out. That I mean, that could be cool. a whole different thing, mm -hmm. you know, but it would be pretty easy to do. Right, and then that would give Dave some more collateral to use. Do you have the <laughs> new little coffee shop in Strum on there? Absolutely. Oh, good, good, because I took some pictures the other day there. Yep. Are there any pictures? No. Oh, okay. I'll send you my pictures yep. I took. Okay. Are they downtown? Is it downtown? Mm -hmm. oh, I check well, it downtown's not very big in no. Strum. <laughs> <laughs> So-called downtown. It's yep. across the street from the church. The Sunrise Road Coffee House. Yep. Wow. Cool. I heard a business like Champions would um, be called rental of tires. Yes, we um, we do actually. I mean, we bought that business with that sort of service attached to it, with canoes and stuff. Um, but maybe, Buzz, we could work together a little bit because. I am canoe stupid, so I have no idea how to actually work one, much less sell them. So, <laughs> so we haven't done a, a good job at all of that. Um, so, and the other thing is, we we just gotta do a little figuring about where they get in and where they get out and how that piece works. But we actually have the equipment to do it, so we sure could. Um, we just need. Uh, I would just need some some coaching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Use the blacker for that, right? Yes. And this is Jean. Hi, Jean. Would there be a way um, with this that uh, you mentioned about the photos, which I think is absolutely fabulous, um, of people throughout the county, if there could be a form um, somehow that would be attached that if they would put the photo on there, we could then use it Dave could use it in marketing because sometimes, you know, obviously, especially like with children, if there's photos, you know, you don't want to get into that, that. but you right. know, somebody horseback riding or whatever, mm -hmm. we could use those photos in marketing on Facebook, you know, a visitor guide that comes on the new website, whatever. Would that be difficult not to a, do? Not at all. Okay. Might we, Thank you. Might we need permission from the, person taking the picture right. to use I just it. get that's that on the phone. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. Thank you. And I think that's a great start, Dave, if you can if you can kind of reach out to all the agencies that you have affiliations and yep. you have their information and all that kind of stuff. If we can start, we do need a list, some kind of contact information and stuff and and obviously one person that would take forever to get that. So we can pull that together, that would be great. Anything else, Ann? I was just looking for that picture of sunrise to send you, but I'll find it. Any more questions for Ann? Thank you for sharing. Yeah, yes, yeah, very good. Very well we can all go home and practice. I'm going to pass out the QR Thanks, Ann, so much for Thank your hard you work. Oh. Okay, we'll move on to number seven. <laughs> Um, thank you, Ann. Economic Development Tourism Manager Report. I'm throwing it to you, David. Okay. Well, I just have a few items to highlight here. I'll keep it brief. <clears throat> um, did attend the Governor's Conference in Tourism uh, last month down in Lake Geneva. It was a fabulous time, as I'm sure Jean would attest to. Um, it was a top-notch production. Um, the hosts, the Grand Geneva Resort, were just outstanding. I felt like I lived like a king for a few days. Um, did make some good contacts with uh, folks from the Outdoor Rec Office at Travel Wisconsin, and they've got a lot of supporting resources uh, that we can tap into and will be. Um, one of the interesting opportunities as part of the conference <clears throat> was there was a breakout session on um, the art of the pitch. And they actually had four regional and national travel writers there. Um, and they, they kind of spent the first 10 minutes of the session, uh, 15 minutes, talking about how, how to best pitch them on a story idea. And then the rest of the session was um, actually giving opportunity for people that were there to make their pitches. <clears throat> so I sat through the first session, and then I thought, geez, this is 
too good an opportunity to pass up. Um, so I stayed for the second session and actually put together a, a, a short pitch. Uh, so that was interesting and, you know, got some good feedback on that and something, you know, that could actually come out of it. Um, and they wanted, they wanted something more specific, you know, not just like, hey, you know, we want to pitch you on the, on, on the entirety of Trumpelow County. Yeah. So, um, so anyways, um, that was really good. A lot of, a lot of um, sessions and information about data and you know how AI can help inform some decisions on um, you know tourism markets and and how effectively you can reach people. So that's really interesting. I'm kind of feeling like a dinosaur because I don't understand how all that stuff works, but I'm trying to because it really is an opportunity for you to more cost effectively market limited resources. And the good thing is we have, um, like when we work with River Travel Media, they do a lot of that stuff for us, which is nice. Um, <clears throat> let me see. Um, I'll talk about this in item eight, um, no, item nine. Uh, but uh, Becky and I have been working on putting together a joint effort marketing grant uh, to do destination marketing research and planning, um, which would include uh, branding and identifying Markets and how we can, you know, more, more accurately and uniquely market our area, with especially with an eye on um, marketing during shoulder seasons. Mm -hmm. So, you know, summer we do pretty well. Fall and winter, early spring, not as much. And honestly, that's where we've been focusing our marketing activities more on recently, anyways. Um, so I'll talk about that in a minute here. <clears throat> had a meeting today to sort of kick off the Visit Eau Claire partnership that I talked about last month with the uh, uh, day trip page for Trempolo County as well as the Instagram and TikTok reels that they're going to be working with us on. As far as economic development, has spending, uh, I, I've been spending some time working on housing. Um, I did attend a meeting a couple weeks ago, and it looks like the Arcadia City Council is going to extend their expiring TIF by one year so that they can tap into that money that's available for affordable housing. You can keep your TIF basically open one last year and keep that revenue and set it aside to do affordable housing initiatives. Um, Galesville is also taking a look at doing that. There'll be a vote on that next week. And then Osseo has already done that with a TIF they had expire a couple of years ago and have actually formed uh, a specific affordable housing plan that those monies can be used for. So that's pretty exciting when we talk about, you know, housing initiatives and how can we get off the dime. Um, one of the things you actually can use some of that money for, Don, that you would find of interest is to do housing studies. So if we need to do a housing study in a particular community or countywide, those are potentially some funds that can be tapped into as well. Um, working with Osseo and Galesville to uh, get them their applications complete for the Connect Communities program, which I think I've talked about, but if not, if you know what the Main Street program is, it's like Main Street except um, you don't have to have a full-time director. It's something you can tap into probably 80% of the resources that are available through a Main Street program without having to have a full-time director. And the cost is like $200 per year. So the Downtown Galesville Business Alliance is going to be the applicant. Um, the city of Galesville um, provided a letter of support and $100, half of the uh, application fee for that. And then in Osseo, it's going to be the Osseo Chamber that's going to be the lead agency. Okay. So I've committed to working with both of them to, you know, as the year goes on, to help facilitate their participation and accessing the resources. Because we have had some communities before, including Arcadia and Whitehall, that have participated in the program, but at some point, you know, lost some interest. And I think this is an opportunity to kind of maybe help sustain that entrance, uh, that involvement and interest over time. Is that something new, Dave? That they don't have to have the uh, that they don't have to have an executive like person. So Connect Communities has always. I mean, that's they why Connect Communities was created. So gotcha. That, so you don't have to <coughs> have that person. Okay. Correct. Because it ruled out. You know, most, right. most towns yeah, under a certain say, size. so many under a certain, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because an executive director for like a Main Street program is going to cost you a minimum 60,000 plus mm -hmm. benefits. And it just made it unrealistic. Right. 
So. That information I sent to you and Becky today from WCA, that's one of the areas they can provide support to the counties. Yep. And there's a page in there, I'll send the PowerPoint to everybody on the committee um, where they talk, and what they're really focusing on are rural areas. Yep. Um, to a f he referred to it as pitching rural affordable pocket neighborhoods and senior housing sites. So, you know, I was totally impressed with him on what the, and I, I felt inadequate that I was not aware <laughs> that this was something, it's called university. Yeah. Right. And they do they do every they do everything from helping plan parks, environmental stuff, housing. Um, it's just unbelievable, and they want to partnership with us with counties. They're in Eau Claire. They're in, they helped Polk County with rebranding. Um, they're doing all kinds of amazing stuff. So we need to think about them. I, I just had two other things as part of my report. <clears throat> Becky and I did have a conversation last week with. Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation kicking around some ideas about um, a program that might work to develop a local uh, economic development grant and loan program. So that's something we, we're going to need to flesh out a little bit more and how would that look and, and is it something that makes sense for us. And then I've had a couple meetings in the last month just with um, aspiring entrepreneurs looking to start up businesses and just because of confidentiality reasons. And having to sign NDAs, I can't really talk about them. But there continues to be that interest. And that's something I've always been a resource for to you know, help them get going, whether it's uh, helping with a, a simple business plan or pointing in the right direction. So, Dave, can you just, um, I, I may have missed it, but when you apply, you mentioned um, applying for a grant yep. for this. Have we applied, and what is the timeline? That's the next agenda item. Oh, never mind. Okay. So if, if, if there's no other questions on my report, we could yes. go into the next agenda. Got a comment, oh, Dave. Uh, last week I had a very fortunate experience. I got invited to the Secretary Vilsack meeting at Great River uh, Milling. Mm -hmm. And uh, it seems like we have a great disconnect in this committee from agriculture. Mm -hmm. And that's made not necessarily by design, but maybe just by turf or whatever. But uh, then after the presentations, I was in a group that about 10 of us sat down with him in a conference room for about an hour and a half. Okay. And he laid out the whole climate smart commodities thing. And it was all geared toward how do we drive more revenue into small and mid-sized farms. And it was pretty obvious from a few of the county board members that are there from Buffalo County. They didn't have a clue. Mm -hmm. And so this has been out there a couple of years, and it's billions of dollars. And I'm just wondering, how do we make the people in our county aware of these opportunities? Right. And especially for some of our mid-sized members, there's a lot of other options for dealing with animal waste as opposed to just trying to generate mm -hmm. methane and electricity from it. There was three other programs he had. Uh, there was a lot of incentive for farmers to uh, get very significant uh, contributions towards putting solar in, probably as you added up, it's probably over 50% by the time it's done. So there's a ton of stuff in this program that would drive our agriculture industry in the county and provide because it was really trying to add uh, economic uh, income streams mm -hmm. to their farms, and it was just one avenue after another. The guy was incredibly impressive. I was totally mm -hmm. blown away by his level of intellect, knowledge, and down-to-earthness. I mean, he, he was with us for like three and a half hours. Oh, wow. That's great. Where is he from? Uh, he's from southern Iowa, but he's okay. the Secretary of Agriculture for yeah. USDA. Okay. He's a cabinet member for the Biden administration. Here you're sitting in the room with him. I was this far from him for two hours and <laughs> chatting away. I mean, yeah. the guy is amazing. I got a very late, like the day before, invite for that. I was wondering. Yeah. yeah so anyhow, uh, bottom line, we could bring potentially millions of dollars to the county right. over the next few yeah. Well, and, years, and, so, and, and who, I, who I got the invite from was Sarah Sippel at I just USDA do. Rural. And so, so she, uh, I think she's a good person I can follow up with and yeah. talk to you and 
flesh that out. And, and maybe we, that would be a great topic for the joint meeting between uh, ELU. ELU and mm -hmm. us, where you would kind of begin to think about bringing those together at some point. Well, it Either was... bring Sarah in or somebody. <laughs> I mean, there's so much breadth to this program. I was going to hop on there, but uh, it's all laid out and uh, a variety of programs. It's there's a lot of breadth to it, is my point. And maybe opportunity, maybe not. Okay. Well, no, I, I was just going to comment. I think that <clears throat> we've talked about um, the fact that ELU and this committee um, some time ago decided to ensure that one of the committee members um, is a member of both of those committees. That happens to be me. Um, the way, John, they call it kind of uh, yeah. <laughs> And um, so I think what that means for me is that it's my responsibility to bring things that have to do with agriculture and land mm -hmm. use um, back to that committee. <clears throat> I don't think I've done a very good job of that, um, but also I'm not sure. I, I do wonder a little bit when we talk about this type of a program, that probably fits here better anyway than it would be in ELU, I think, if we're talking about doing things that would improve agritourism, mm -hmm. right? That seems to me like the fit would be here. The only, anyway, I can bring it to that committee just to discuss. I know that we'll get a joint committee um, meeting <clears throat> set up here, hopefully in the near future, so don't forget that as an agenda item. But then I just, it's so hard because there's so many different things to be trying to right. look into that, you know, you got to try to figure out what's going to be your focus for you know, this particular year or session or period of time, too. So the, there's a lot of competing priorities. Does ELU, could you speak for a second on what their priorities are? I mean, um, for the coming year or for last year, issues that they're really focused on? Typically, when I've been involved in, well, typically in the past year and a half, they're looking at zoning. They're looking okay. at, you know, land use, conditional use permits. Okay. Um, I know they did do a large solar study um, at some point prior to my joining the team. So I think that must have been in 22, and I think it wrapped up in 23. Um, so they, they did do a solar study. Um, they obviously get um, com all of the... Uh, uh, Oh boy. I don't mean to, you don't need to like go on. Yeah, I, I'm That's conservation, like, conservation practices. And right. there's a lot of conservation practices that we're involved in that farmers can apply for that we can, you know, provide funding and assistance for them for runoff and, you know, a lot of other things. So there's quite a bit of programming going on in the agricultural world, but not toward tourism, I don't believe. Right. Well, I think <clears throat> maybe. What I was thinking about when you were talking, and then it brought me to the Red Cedar, you know, the watershed conference. Maybe you ought to talk about that at the end of the meeting, if there's anything we need to know. But just on supporting our small farmers, because they're, they're really struggling um, for a variety of reasons. You know, climate change, getting people to work, um, competition with big, you know. All the above. When Adam's... Yeah farm dairy closed and Oliva it broke my heart you know but so I think there's there's a lot of things to talk about together with ELU on how we can be a better support to our family farms that's the bread and butter I think of our county well, I heard it once during that morning probably heard it seven or eight times this money is targeted to small and mid-sized farms Good. Okay. to keep them on the farms and yep. make, get them more profitable by maybe adding different revenues, something like agritourism mm -hmm. or CSAs. There's money in there for startups on that, adding solar to your farm to get rid of your energy costs over time. Right. I mean, <clears throat> there's so much breadth to this effort that it was way beyond me. This is somebody that needs to come in the begins to understand. Okay. What, what is what the name the, of the program, Buzz? I don't want- Climate I'm, Smart Commodities. Climate Smart Commodities? Yeah, this, what the event was on last uh, Tuesday when we were down there, we were at a kickoff event for the first ever Climate Smart Commodity being commercially marketed in the United States of America. It happened in Fountain City, Wisconsin last night. Wow. <laughs> That's and pretty cool. It's long grain white rice and long grain uh, brown rice, and it's produced in Mississippi, Missouri, and 
Arkansas and it's packaged in Fountain City hmm. and marketed under their label then. And, uh, and it got rid of 75% of the carbon budget for how we grow rice in this country now. And the big deal was that can be shopped around the world because rice is the most common food worldwide. So it's a big deal. It sounds to me like a good opportunity to partner with, and we, we've talked about this before with Buffalo County. I mean, we're just these small counties that really could support each other. And I really feel strongly about building coalitions and uh, kind of like how human <coughs> services did with their economic support. You know, we need to find ways where we can support each other and not everybody go under. I okay. added it to my agenda for <laughs> our meeting on Wednesday just to bring it up and initiate. Yeah, good get idea. It as a, get it on a, as an agenda topic for the next meeting. And That's the ELU meeting, meeting mm -hmm. Wednesday? Okay. Yeah. yeah, and if you had any direct questions before that, if you want, Sarah Sipple is the Rural Partners Network Coordinator for Western Wisconsin, not a Menominee. Yes, sir. I think with an H, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. S A R H. Thank you, Buzz, for that info. More? You're done? Okay. Uh, now we'll move to number nine. You want to come closer to us? Do you want me to? Do you want me to run through this one? You want me to run through this, Becky? Okay. So I, I did mention this in my report briefly, but uh, we... We're just for so people know, we're on number nine, joint effort, yeah. GEM grant application so, discussion. So Be Becky and I have been working on this since the last PTED meeting, because uh, it was kind of an idea, I think, that came up during the meeting, and we ran with it. And so we did apply for a joint effort marketing uh, grant um, from the Wisconsin Department of Tourism. We've been told it's pretty competitive, especially this time around because they've used most of their money for this state fiscal year, which ends in June. But I think we put together a pretty good application. I did hit submit at about 1230 this afternoon. Um, we still would like a motion uh, for the minutes that just says, yes, we, we support applying for the grant. Um, it's not required for the grant, but it's just good, I think, practice. Uh, but we did end up getting 11 letters of support for the grant. Um, everybody from Osseo, Whitehall, Blair, Arcadia, Ashley for the Arts, uh, City of Independence, City of Galesville, um, and then Jackson, Buffalo, and Pepin County. I think that's it. That's, there was 11 letters of support. But um, the plan really that we put together, that we put in the application, and this is by the way, because some of you might be familiar with GEM grants, and they have some that are available for actual, actual promotion of like events or new initiatives. This is actually one that we're putting in under what they call the <clears throat> destination marketing research component. So it is um, a plan where we would hire a consultant that deals in you know, development of uh, uh, tourism brands, um, identifying uh, target audiences, that type of thing. So it would be a pretty intensive period of probably nine months to a year to uh, parse all that stuff out. What are your target markets? What are the things that make you unique? Um, how do we wrap that up in a brand? And then how do you deploy that brand, um, including uh, development of a website and other marketing materials? And the website is where that idea came up from last right. year as a potential way to help pay for some of that work. Um, Becky, am I missing anything? I don't think so. I mean, that's a pretty good cover of it. It's a, if we get it the first year, um, then the expectation is you get it for two years after. Um, they did say it was highly competitive right now, and so if we don't get it right now, then we would be encouraged to reapply, which is September. Yep. Yep. When will we have a determination? I think when I was down at the uh, tourism conference and I sat down in this session, I think it's 45 days to come in. They do an out, they have an outside panel that reviews these people involved with tourism and economic development. So it's not it's not Wisconsin Department of Tourism staff. It's objective outside. So we probably won't know yet by our next meeting, but hopefully. By no, I, I would I would be shocked if we knew right. by the next meeting, but I would think by June. Okay. Yeah, June. We should know. 
I think uh, to your point, Jean, that you know the appeal of uh, working with the other counties, so doing internal with Trempolo and all of our partners here, but also looking at special things that are happening in our neighboring counties and how we can be regional in that. Mm -hmm. uh, that was very appealing to the state of Wisconsin. So. Um, I think that's a good route to go as well. I mean, we're like the three gems of the state, if you ask me, Pepin, Buffalo, and Trempolo. Well, and one, one thing I put in the application as part of the narrative with, with really just trying to set the stage was how we're located really, I mean, fortunately, between Eau Claire, Winona, and La Crosse, all of which have really good destination marketing organizations, much bigger budgets than we do. So, of course, we're geographically and strategically aligned with all of those. But the opportunity that we have is really to come up with a brand and an identity of our own so that when we're marketing, you know, we're not saying, oh, come to Eau Claire, come to La Crosse, come to Winona and spend an extra day here that we can market and have an identity in our own right. Um, you know, and if that's a three county I mean, we have a lot of co in common with Buffalo and Pepin County, so it does just seem kind of natural right. to, to, at, to at least have discussions about what are some of the similarities we've got and how could we work together. So you would like a motion to proceed with applying for the GEM grant that you've subsequently already applied for? <laughs> Okay, maybe I make the that motion. motion. It sounds well, maybe bad the motion when you put should it that be way. To but, support yes. the gem grant that was submitted today. I motion to support the gem grant that was submitted earlier today. I'll second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Awesome. Thanks, Jean. Sorry, I need to wait to hear from you. That's Anything all else? I've got. Are there for any today. questions? Okay. Jean, I'm going to throw it to you Wisconsin Great River Road update. Okay. Um, we were at the governor's conference um, and we did printing with Woodward Printing, which is out of Platteville for our uh, 2024 visitor guides, which are already done. They brought um, two boxes for us. We went through those boxes of visitor guides there. And from that, um, the Friends of the Great River Road being there, we already had um, 55 requests of boxes, uh, some more than one, to the welcome centers and to other DMOs. We had a thousand individual requests already waiting through Explore La Crosse. Nice. And then through DOT, we got almost 800 um, that, and that was what, three weeks ago. So the, the requests keep coming in. Um, so it's a good thing that uh, Trumplow County got in there. The ad was very nice. Um, I'm very pleased with it. And people made comments how they thought the ad was um, very nice. So that's great. Awesome. Um, I dropped off the visitor guides uh, for Dave at the city of Galesville on Tuesday, March 19th for him to distribute. Um, the visitor guide will be on the Wisconsin Great River Road website um, in the next couple of days. So people can see that they can download it themselves or they can also request a hard copy be mailed uh, to them. Uh, Great River Road, we are working with the Wisconsin Department of Transportation on the Discover Media Works, Discover Wisconsin show. Um, they are finishing up with Crawford and Grant counties. They have so much footage they, from all the eight counties um, that they are having a hard time um, cutting down to make the half hour segment. The premiere was just dated um, for Wednesday, May 15th, that the Radisson Lacrosse Secretary Thompson, who is in charge of the Wisconsin Department of Tourism, his schedule allowed for that date. He's so busy. Um, we put out like 10 uh, dates, and the only day he could come was May 15th. So I will uh, let Dave know for sure when that um, he'll be getting the invite to represent. Also, um, County Chair Board um, John Awesome will also be invited. Um, in regards to Dave talking about the GEM grant. I sat on the GEM grant committee for God, 10 or 12 years. And it is, it's really, it's really a hard, hard thing. But the GEM grant committee, when I was on it, we took very much pride in reviewing 
um, all the paperwork that goes through it. They streamlined it a lot, so it wasn't as uh, paper heavy as it used to be. Um, but when I was part of it, you know, we had a roundtable discussion. The members got the grants ahead of time. We read everything. We had questions um, when we met. Um, and I, I have my fingers crossed and hope good things for us too, um, to get that grant. And, and Dave's right. It's, it's, it's a hard competition. And there's some people that um, have written three or four times that just didn't get it. So if we don't get it, we just keep plugging and, and keep uh, writing for it. Um, Perot State Park is finally, the south entrance is finally getting um, paved over, which is good. The north entrance is open for the park. Um, so that's a good thing. Wigcott, or Wisconsin Governor's Conference on Tourism, next year, 2025, is March 9th through the 12th. I encourage all of you to... Um, or to sign up for it. Dave can provide you with that information when it comes then. For those of you who aren't real familiar with economic development and tourism can go sit through the breakout sessions. You can network with other counties, um, other state officials. Um, and it's funny that uh, Buzz brought up about the agriculture because Every year with Wig Cup, Dawn Zanoni, who right now uh, in August is her last uh, year with us. She's had 30 years in uh, doing the Wig Cut, which is that's what her job was, is preparation for that, which God love her because it's a hard job. Anyway, um, after every conference, there is an evaluation. And for the last three or four years, um, I have heard from smaller communities, some have one person that volunteers for tourism, some have two or three, some have none, um, that smaller communities don't feel like they're really part of the state of Wisconsin. And a lot of that comes from our side of the, of the state because some people think that the state ends at Wisconsin Dells. <laughs> and it does it, as you all know. So that's one of the reasons why Wisconsin Great River Road pushes and pushes and pushes so hard for people to come over here and love our things. So one of the things we've talked about is agritourism and it's already on my evaluation that will be going in for that. So Buzz, God love you for bringing it up. And I think um, it's a good idea that, like I said, you all come, I'd like to see a couple farmers. If we could get that, a couple orchard people, um, a couple people that do roadside stands, farmers markets, things like that. So hopefully the new person that will be taking over, um, Wigcott will consider that. Um, and especially for the smaller communities because they need that information. Now, Drew Nesbaum, who is our regional tourism specialist, has been in this business years and years, personal friend of mine, works extremely hard. Um, and I want to make sure you all know that works extremely hard promoting um, all of Wisconsin, but really smaller communities, too, and the west side of Wisconsin. Um, and Dave already brought up about Cassie uh, Mortadini, the new director for Outdoor Rec. She is fabulous. Um, I think she could even be invited to a meeting or provide stuff so you can get some more information um, from her. She's she's outstanding. Um, we're working on Earth Day, which is April 22nd this year. Um, river cleanups along the Mississippi River are in progress. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife has their 40-year anniversary. Um, they just got approved for the new visitor center on Bryce's Prairie to be the next interpretive center for Wisconsin for an Great River Road. So that's fabulous. And then May 19th to the 25th is National Tourism Week. So a lot of stuff going on. You know, we're hitting the ground running with things and continuing to promote all of our counties and go from there. Does anybody have any questions? We should all right. Little, Thank you for your time. We should have a little mini tourism conference right here in this room. I don't, I don't have any questions for you, Jean, but... Um, I did get your box of Great River Road Guides. I think before the meeting is done, I'll go down to my office and grab that box. And if any of you want to take a handful um, sure. to distribute or yeah, well, whatever, that would be great. Um, Gene, I think, was going to mention it, but the Governor's Conference on Tourism next year 
will actually be right in our backyard in La Crosse. Yep. So it'll make it easier for people to maybe get down for a day or part of a day. Oh, um, and then the final thing I will mention, because I, I, I try to keep people informed, and it occurred to me that maybe you all don't know, but I am a board member for the Wisconsin Ag Tourism Association. I have been for about a year now. So I've been uh, actively involved with that group in terms of trying to figure out how we can better promote ag tourism statewide um, as well as locally here. So. Thank you. Park report. Jack. Yeah. So I'm gonna be pretty brief with this park report cause I have some friends of information to get to and a rec pond update with our kind of like a park comparison um, list that's going to be pretty lengthy. Um, Becky might have some things to add into there once we get there. But for the park report, there is some things I'd want to go over. Um, we had mentioned the music series um, last meeting. Um, so I wanted to give you guys an update about that. Um, we decided to focus kind of on the marketing aspect and leave the music aspect up to the community. So places like Arcadia, um, Independence, Whitehall throughout the Strum. communities and yeah. Strum is, might have one. Um, they are gonna be focusing on picking the band and handling the payment. Mm -hmm. That way we can focus on a marketing plan um, for the events. So that would consist of WHTL, um, getting something set up with them, um, getting some signage um, that we can post throughout the community and find some spots for that and as well as communicating with the bands and doing some social media promotion with that. Cool. So um, just wanted to give everyone kind of an update on that music series. Um, we did get a heat source that went into the claw shelter yesterday. Um, Iona Heating and Cooling um, did put a heat source, uh, he Mr. Heater, um, in there. So we'll, we will have heat um, dependent on a gas line coming from our current tanker. Um, so we will have heat in that claw shelter. So that's that's great wow. news. And, it only took um, a year. Uh-huh. And we do have been that waiting on that for a while. <laughs> we do have that camp or that sixth grade camp out coming up. So if it does rain, the girls will have it's snowing some, right now. Uh-huh. The girls will have some heat in the shelter, which will be awesome. Um, we did oh, yeah, yeah with that <coughs> gas line, we decided to put a separate tank in there instead okay. of plumbing a, a line over there so we could kind of control how much usage it was instead of just having one big tank. Sure, sure, and that's definitely um, a good thing to think about. Premier Co-op, I'm having trouble getting in contact with them. I've had a tentative date of uh, April 8th um, to have them go and run that line, but... I'll maybe just have to meet them out there and kind of talk it over before they go on doing something. Yeah, because you have too long a span with that line versus mm. having a separate tank there. But I know that's what we decided on about three, four months ago. Okay. okay. This committee. Good to know. Mm -hmm. yep. Pardon? This mm -hmm. committee. Yes. Talks yes. About that. Yeah. Okay. Kevin. Jack, Jack's had a little bit of difficulty with communication from Premier from slash Premier Dodge. Slash Dodge. Um, because one of the things we talked about, Bob, was trying to get, you know, a, a comparison between, you know, the cost of, of um, piping that roughly, whatever it is, 600, it, it's not even 600 feet, mm -hmm. versus having another tank and then having to pay to have a, a you know, a totally separate tank filled too. And I, I do know there was discussion about that. And to be honest with you, the communication's not been super. So, um, Jack can certainly follow up on that and see if we can get some side-by-sides, but. Yeah, next time I talk to them, once they give me a, a ring back, I'll kind of mention that, hey, do we have to have a new tanker out there or a new line? Because that tanker is pretty old. And I think the reason we kind of, I thought there was a resolution that specifically stated that we would have a separate tanker think, and yeah. line. So that I'm not sure if it's, time. I'm not sure if it's really debatable. I think that's what we decided to go with unless we bring it back. But the reason we wanted to go with that separate line had a lot to do with understanding usage um, in the shelter itself and costs to us versus the use for the other, you know, heat. Um, and we wouldn't be able to distinguish. 
You are correct. I do re recall that. So, Jack, I mean, I think what you can do is just, especially since they haven't done it yet, pivot and just find out what a, a, what a dedicated tank that we would put outside the cloth shelter would cost. Good um, but that's probably the way we should go, given the committee's Well, is our tank, that the action. big tank by the cloth shelter, or not by the cloth shelter, by the bathhouse, <laughs> is that a tank that the park owns? Or is it one that we lease a penny a year? I'm, I'm pretty sure we lease that from Dodge. Well, that would be the same thing. So there yeah. would be no expense for the, the tank. It's just basically a dollar a year, yeah. basically, for rental. And you're going to run into a pile of money when you're running a span of, you know, half-inch pipe, 600 feet versus having that. And then, like Dawn said, too, the reason we went with that, if we're going to rent this out in the colder seasons, and our deposit is, say, $100, for instance. Well, you're burning up more than $100 worth of fuel. Well, it's time we readjust our uh, our rental on this. You're not going to have it that's just going to power, like, the bathhouse with the hot water heater and all of that. You're going to be able to watch your expenditures a little more closely. Yeah, I think that's exactly why we... What I think. Yeah. This, this was, like, last... I, this was months ago. It was before you were here, yeah. and... And it was when we were, when Kevin Iona, we hadn't heard from him for a year, and now apparently he did. So it was like a lot of stuff was going on in that year. So just. Yeah. The other reason I'd advocate for not running a line is just when we think about potential modifications to the park mm -hmm. itself, and now we have to deal with where our line's buried, et cetera, right. et cetera. Right. Sure. So it'll make a lot more sense. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't have a preference either okay, way. Good. So that's, that'll be, that'll work fine for me. We can just kind of shift and pivot right. um, for. The direction okay. for that, getting that new tank and getting that priced. I'm just so happy there's heat in there because yeah. we've been talking about Eventually. that forever. Yeah. Before, uh -huh. like five years ago. Well, the heat source is there. The we heat source. Exactly. Right, right. The source is there. <laughs> no we just need heat. the gas to get it there. And that doesn't take long. Yeah, yeah. So I guess I'll move on. Okay. Um, so there was a, a rodeo um, at the horse arena brought to my attention. Um, there is an individual that wants to do a rodeo, so I wanted to bring it up to awesome. you guys. Um, so, potential rodeo, an individual by the name of Ricardo T. came to us with the idea of a rodeo at Petrick on May 12th and July 6th. He has some connection with the Arcadia Fire Department and is wondering about the possibility of serving alcohol at the events. He did mention the idea of a sign donation, security at the events, along with knowledge of local horse contacts like Becky Hines and Connie Guza. And I'll have a meeting with Connie and Becky um, tomorrow at the horse arena. So okay, cool. they'll give me some good information about horse contacts um, in the area and what's kind of been done in the past and hopefully give me a little more background on if we were gonna do a rodeo um, what we would need, and I did want to bring up the, the alcohol thing, um, selling, if Arcadia Fire Department were to sell alcohol at the park, that probably is something that definitely needs to be mentioned at PTED, um, but something that maybe the park wasn't designated for and maybe we're not able to do that. So did want to open it up for discussion. A couple of things on mm -hmm. that. So um, I... Um, I don't currently have horses, but I did for years. So it's kind of one of the things when um, Reed was uh, the park uh, guy, I had asked him a lot of questions about that arena because it has been poorly used in recent years. Yep. Um, and I, I guess I understand that there's some sort of an interesting history behind uh, perhaps a 4-H group pay, paid to have it put in or something, uh, some interesting history. But ultimately what I was interested in was uh, at the time I had asked Reed, what well, what would a person have to do to reserve to use the arena? And at the time we didn't even have keys to the building there. Yep. Do, yep. do we have keys? I have one set of keys there. We now? don't have multiple set of keys, but definitely and, get, I'm working on like a lock plan where we have one lock and key for all of the doors at Petrick. Um, so that would definitely help out with that, being able to make more than one key for um, all the locks. At the time when Reed and I were talking about this, he had understood that it, 
any reservations to use that arena were to go through the 4-H group rather than the county. It seemed odd to me. I didn't understand how how we were using that and et cetera. So I guess I'm just real interested in cleaning that up. Sure. It, it, it is reservable through Camp Spot. Mm -hmm. no. Okay, it is. And, Perfect. But the other thing I'll just say, Dawn, about the uh, about that building, yes, there is a key. And after Reed left and before Jack started, I went through the whole park and checked keys and checked buildings. And um, I will tell you that that building, I, I, for lack of a better word, I would call it the press box or whatever. The judge's it's, box. Judge's when they box. used to have horse it shows, is, it is an extremely, it's an extremely rough shape. Yeah. Um, Bees have torn it up. Um, up, yep, up in the top layer and it's just. Like honeybees you know, or wasps? Probably a mixture of both. And the you stairs, the stairs don't, the, the stairs don't feel entirely stable <laughs> going up there. So I, I just, I would have somebody check it out before, like somebody would actually use it because it's it's really rough. I think it, back in the day when the 4-H kids were there and there were horse shows there, the purpose of that was because I have horses and have been to horse shows. That's where the judges sat to, you know. They don't need to be in that building to judge a class, you know. They can be in the, at my horse shows, they're in the middle of the arena watching the horses. They're not up in some building. My recommendation would be if we do that, that, you know, that be communicated that that building is not, up you know, that, that they would, that they would, they would have to make arrangements for like some judging stand or whatever. Right. And that just what happens with that building is just going to be, part of a discussion I'm guessing of future park stuff right. that announcers table that's the second time that's been rebuilt because when we had all that damage out at the park she tumbled over and it was rebuilt back then and then as for the uh, horse arena itself the reason the 4-H had control of it the 4-H built it there was no expense to the park at all there all the materials and labor and everything was donated to build that arena. And what was been put out there, there were some uh, gymkhanas out there, little britches a little bit, and then there was cowboy mounted shooting out there that Mark Brave had put on out there. But there's been some exhibitions out there. And then that, <clears throat> excuse me, one time they were thinking about moving the rodeo from Arcadia out there, but they figured that would take too much away from the city of Arcadia when they have the high school rodeo out there during Arcadia days. Um, I guess I understand that the 4-H, you know, built it and donated it, but by virtue of donating it to the county, it, to me, would then be usable by anybody in the county. It was without, usable by anybody, but I mean... But they had to contact the 4-H person, right, right? but I mean, it was just so, basically how the park was set up, it's a 4-H park. You know, the kids had priority yeah. versus a, a commercial institute coming in. But I mean, it, 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 things can change. I mean, it's just that, okay, if you had the 4-H kids say they were getting ready for the fair and somebody wanted to come out there, well, the kids didn't have a fair chance of using it. Yeah, and then I think after a period of time, they built the new arena at the Trumple County Fairgrounds, which is, I think, where a lot of the 4-H stuff is done now. Right, but yeah. this but was basically, that, a, this is a practice thing, oh, basically. Okay. Okay. Or if they wanted to, you know, have, say their 4-H, club meets on Wednesday nights that the kids could come out there and walk their horse around and stuff like that versus, you know, going all the way to Galesville. And it, wa and it was available if people just wanted to drive down and work their horse in that arena if they didn't have an indoor arena or a place at their own, at their own farm. But it, the 4-H kids haven't used it for a long My My daughter went there, but she's 41 now. No, okay. 43 now. And then so a lot had to do with, you know, they could use that arena there too. Is the horse trail come like from crossroads yeah, yeah, all right. the way down along the river? And they say if they were going to park their horse trailer there and confine it in the arena, you know, and let it water down and rest before they loaded it up and take it home. Mm -hmm. What well, I think what happened in the back when they used to have horse shows there, that was when people felt comfortable just tying their horse to the trailer. Now horses are. They want stalls, they want them to be inside, they don't want them to, you know, there's a lot of things that have changed, but um, I think it's a great idea to talk with them about that. Yeah. I, the alcohol thing, I don't know how I feel about that, but. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. Well, that was my next That's question. What they is did the... serve alcohol at the fair this year, and they had no problems right. with it. Okay. Not nobody got arrested. So, no so the issues. First year they allowed alcohol in the fair. Mm -hmm. This Arcadia year was the first year. Fire department told me that they were licensed, um, and they would be the ones selling the alcohol. Okay. And this Ricardo has security. He said he's got about ten to fifteen members that would be available security. So I, I need some more information. Yeah, like who's the security? Yeah. It's not some motorcycle gang. Uh -huh. So I, I'm very in the dark like right. you guys are here. In Basically this. with that though, they still have to yeah. get a picnic yeah. license yeah. and yeah. that would have to go through the town of Arcadia. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah not, whoever is gonna put a... the event on yeah. would have to go through the town of Arcadia to get a picnic and license. Would that just... be a problem being a third party like through our park or? Usually the organization that puts something yeah. on is the one responsible for the picnic license. Right. And, I, and I think at the, how they did it at the fair this year was great. There was a beer garden and you could only drink in there and you couldn't be carrying your beer all over the park. Yeah. So oh, I, I believe right. that's yeah. I believe that's why it was so successful at the 4-H. I mean, that's the first time in the history of the 4-H. You're saying they had guardrails basically? And it, was a, it, it was a cordoned off area and people knew you were going in a beer garden and that's where you stayed so yeah there's a lot of research but i think it's a good idea to start using that horse arena yeah mm -hmm. it definitely. needs work you know mm -hmm. the, it's rocky and it, and that's one thing that the horse contacts that i've talked to they said you should think about what? interior fencing um along the wood okay. wood fencing so you guys keep your fence in good condition yeah. So that's all stuff they'd have to provide. Right. Um, bleachers, they talked about bringing in and, okay. and that type of stuff. So I guess I wanted to just bring it to your guys' attention and get more information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess that was my biggest question. Is this thing safe enough for rodeo stock is right. not a horse show? Mm -hmm. It's Yeah, it's, it's definitely for rodeo, not just horse stock. So they're going to be like calf roping. And, I know that, mm -hmm. but a rodeo is what I'm worried about. It's just that arena substantial enough yeah. <laughs> been to enough rodeos to know you they hit speak, the fence hard yes. things happen <laughs> i didn't intend to be here for this but oh <laughs> god thank god i was so <laughs> so when you do that you're hiring a stock contractor and they bring all the gates right. for oh, that awesome. okay i sure. wouldn't say that Petrix Park is set up for that because you have to have multiple entrances. There's chutes, there's stuff like that, like bucking poles and whatnot. There is a stock contractor up in Jeannie's area. Yeah. I don't know their name. I know that I see their yeah. bucking poles. Yeah, in I know. There. Yeah, he's right on D. Yep, yep. So, I mean, there's local people that you could contact yep. for that. I can get you some other horse people contacts sure. because that is also, I dip my toe in there. Mm -hmm. What? Yes. Bring they bring their own yes. stuff. Yes. So, like, when Arcadia does that, um, Dave Taysom is a good person to talk to for that. They bring all of that. The stock contractor has all the tube gates and everything. They set everything up, and they take it down because they're the ones who are in charge of all the animals. So they have to have something that's secure. They're not going to expect you guys to go out there and put up the tube gates because that's a lot of hard work. So, no. Yeah, but. there's all kinds of rules about how things are set up. Yes. And, you know, so none mm. of us... I wouldn't well, even have a clue how to do well, it. Well, and because those animals are athletes, and so they right. know where they're supposed to be and when they're supposed right. to be right. there. So if you have it set up wrong, they're not going to like that. No, they'll be so. pissed off. Basically, yeah. when they come to Arcadia, this is Dean. Can we move on? And Because he's yeah. gonna, Jack's going to have to do more research. Okay. Yeah, go right. Yeah. Yes. Thanks. Were you I don't have too much information, so I was just kind of letting yeah. you guys know. Do you have know, anything so more to say before you walk away? I didn't know that the 4-H built the arena, but um, no, we don't, they don't physically use that one as much right. anymore. Dawn's right. They use the one down in Galesville and they're redoing that right. one as well. Um, I, would, I wouldn't say that they have any ownership of it anymore, but yeah. Connie is a good person to talk to about that because they've mm -hmm. been in that space. And, yeah. Well, May is yeah. not I got gonna, a good uh, meeting with them tomorrow. May night, is next so. month, yeah. and they want to do something in May, so it's not mm -hmm. like a lot. It's not like this committee has the opportunity to yeah. have all the answers. But yep. okay, all right. Um, I know you have a lot more to talk about. So, are you well, done with I'll the just, park report? Uh, yeah, I'm still in my park report. Okay. Uh, Marks are onboarding starting on Friday. So uh, Mark Helgeson and Mark Marsalek are parks. Um, groundskeepers, um, we'll, we'll start the onboarding process. 
um, this Friday, and they will start work pretty soon here in the next week. Um, and then priorities list has been moved to the comparison info, which I'll go over later. Okay. Snowmobile sucked this year, so but do you want to give your report yeah. on the bridges? So Dave had... Was this Dave or yeah, you? Yeah, this okay. is Dave. So he um, put together a resolution for the snowmobile bridges we had mentioned in last meeting. Okay, thank we you, actually, Jack. Yes, we actually have two resolutions. Um, the first one is the bridges, and I included this in the packet. Would you still like me to read the resolution for the record? Yeah, you have to read it for the record. <clears throat> All right, so this is a resolution, whereas <clears throat> Tremplow County has 251 miles of state-funded snowmobile trails that provide important outdoor rec opportunities to residents as well as visitors. And whereas this network of snowmobile trails also contributes significantly to our local economy by drawing visitors to the area who spend money on gas, lodging, grocery supplies, and dining. And whereas a number of these trails require bridges to traverse bodies of water or other terrain safely. And whereas Tremplow County, in coordination with area snowmobile clubs, annually assess the need for bridge repair or replacement and Tremplow County, as part of this process, has identified the following bridges to be in need of replacement. Hague Bridge, County NN Bridge in Osseo, and the Osseo Golf Course Bridge, all of which are located on state-funded trails. And whereas Tremplow County intends to apply for funding from the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources to complete these proposed bridge projects, and whereas the cost of these project, pro, proposed projects, if approved, will be reimbursed 100% through the grant. Now be it resolved, the Trempolo County Parks and Recreation Coordinator is authorized to submit the grant request for these projects, sign any required contracts and reimbursements for state grants that provide expenses and revenue for bridge repair and replacement within the scope of the grant. Expenses will be coded to account 101.55440.393, special projects, and funds to be deposited into account 101.43572 DNR grants. Are they ready for us to sign? Do you need us to, well, you need a motion. Yeah, I one quick question. Well, I make a motion to approve. I'll second. And then I have a question. Okay. Uh, I just am wondering, so the resolution being on the table right now is, just confuses me a little bit. There's risk that we won't get the funding from the state, right? Correct, but Correct. then the project won't get done either. Okay, and it doesn't really say that in oh. here, so I just wanted to be clear that if we don't get the funding, we don't do we the don't work, do the and we funding. won't do the work until we get the funding. Right, and I thought, that I, good point, I thought that was covered in the where is the cost for these proposed projects, if approved, approved meaning by DNR for the grant will be reimbursed, but the, the, the prac, we don't do the projects unless we get the DNR grant, because we don't have any money to do it. it they're 100% funded, so if they're selected, that's what pays for it. Mm -hmm. and, one, otherwise, and otherwise one, the work's not done. Correct. One of the things you'll have to look at too is if there's some other ones that need to be done, it might be a good year to do it, because there wasn't a snowmobile trail open from La Crosse North, yeah. and there wasn't a dime spent on anything this year except for maintenance. Right. Right. Jack can tell you these are the three that were yeah, identified. I think the, these are all everything that, we, that I could find, and um, these are kind of in the most need, especially the one in the golf course. It's in pretty bad condition. Um, doesn't have any hand railings or anything like that. But. Yeah, these, these are the bridges we kind of heard about, and it's kind of three, it almost seems like can't really handle much more than, yeah. than getting. But what I'm getting at in. is if they've, when you meet with the Snowmobile Association, if they've got anything, you know, in the back of their mind, yeah. that if we get it, we get it. Mm -hmm. If we don't, we don't. Like if they want to, you know, add some more miles to the trail or, or something like that, because like I said, with the budget the Snowmobile Association has got, and nothing was spent. Yeah. Guys are going to be chewing at the bit to try and get some money out of the state. Something we're working on with snowmobiles is um, getting our um, new trails in that haven't been documented. So, like, they're supposed to be compiling a list of clubs um, that we can transfer over to, to Ann. Ann and I can work together so the maps are current and active. Um, so that's something we were planning to do this summer. Since, since he started in December, Jack's been going to the monthly 
associated snowmobile club meetings and as part of those ongoing discussions that's where these projects get identified and I, I, I hear what you're saying Bob you know if 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 we had additional projects this would be a year to, to do it too. these are the three that we got mm -hmm. from the club so yeah. these are kind of like mandatory things right. but what I mean it's like some secondary right. that boy it sure would be nice but I mean right. You can't ask unless you, you ask, or you can't find out unless you ask. Yeah, and updating files so we have like plans for the future, that's gonna be a priority for me when it comes to snowmobiles. Because I know one of the things I'd always ask like the guys around our snowmobile clubs, they said, hey, do you guys have anything that you made it through the winter that's on your agenda list, you know, so okay, we got a culvert here that needs to be fixed or a bridge that's got some loose boards instead of bringing it up in August right. and then yeah. October you're already put, you know, marking trails that you're going into it all summer long and uh, can uh, do a little maintenance or agree to find a contractor to fix this stuff before winter sets in. And nobody asked it, but this application has not been submitted yet. It'll be April 15th is the deadline. <laughs> what will you know? Um, again, these are usually within 45 days. Okay, the DNR is pretty good about it because they got to get the work done before, yep. during the summer. Okay. I just want to remind you too that on the snowmobiles, the DNR, it's bridges are not the priority. It goes maintenance, right. maintenance first, the supplement, right. and then the bridges. So uh -huh. depending on who is requesting the money, the funds might not even be there for these bridges to even right. happen. That's why I think it's good to just start with the ones that are the highest priority, and then we can look at other ones. It was ones. really good for me to be able to put three of them together in such a short time right. span, um, just so I can learn for future years. Right, sure. Mm -hmm. Do you have one that needs a little more work than the other? So I mean that, you know, if you only get one. One, okay, yeah, gotta right, we got to do right. this one. So uh, Jackson County uh, gave us an old bridge um, for the HEG. Um, so that would be a straight bridge replacement. So we already have the materials for that. That's one I think we definitely, I would favor in doing. Um, Osseo Golf Course, the groomer can't get over the, that section of trail doesn't get groomed. So that would be another key, key bridge to kind of think about because yeah, then the yeah, groomer could get over there. Mm -hmm. Martha, yeah. River. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, do you need? We have a resolution in a second. Do you, you're good with how it's written? You want, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Do you have ones for us to sign or? Yep, I've got. I'll I'll bring that over in just okay. a second. So the second resolution is our <clears throat> um, annual maintenance uh, grant application. So I'll read that one as well. Uh, whereas Tremplo County currently has 251.6 miles of state funded snowmobile trails that provide important outdoor recreational opportunities to residents as well as visitors. And whereas this network of trails must be maintained through activities such as clearing debris and trail grooming to ensure trails are safe and passable. And whereas this work is done on behalf of Tremplo County by a number of different snowmobile clubs under the umbrella of the Associated Snowmobile Clubs of Tremplo County, and whereas costs of maintenance done by the clubs is reimbursable through a maintenance grant provided by the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources based on a formula which considers number of trail miles, and whereas Tremplo County, as the state recognized, county snowmobile coordinator must submit the maintenance grant request to DNR and track and track and reimburse eligible costs for the clubs. Now be it resolved, Tremplo County Parks and Recreation Coordinator is authorized to submit the grant request, accept funds to account 101.43571 snowmobile trails and expenses from account 101.55440.395 trail maintenance for costs of maintaining the trails. In the event the county coordinator is unable to sign the grants and reimbursements, the land Fis land management fiscal manager is granted the ability to do so. I like how you have a primary and a backup. That's good. Stone stick or whatever. I think we had. To, I think we had to submit maintenance and our bridges separately, so that's why they're Correct. separate. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion. Resolution I'll, passes. I'll I'll it start these. Not, we need this, this team. Yes. Do you want 
do you want Becky to email that to me? Like, can I do an auto signature or, no, or we'll doesn't just, it matter if I what, can find it? Jean, what we do when you, when someone attends virtually, we just put an X by your name to show that you were there and that you did approve. Fabulous. So you don't want me to verbally say it. Well, I oh, thought yeah, you, you did verbally it. say it. Oh no, I did. But I mean, do I have to do it separate that it says? No, you're good. We'll, okay, take, good. we'll take care of your signature for you because we know you're here. You're like loud and clear today. It's like you're right in the same room. Yeah. With us. Can we move on to Friends of? Yes, we can. Okay. So um, I have a short blip of kind of the Friends of discussion. I did introduce the idea, so I would like to make a motion um, this meeting. So I'll go over that now. Okay. Um, last PTED, we discussed moving from Friends of Petrick Park to Friends of Trempolo County Parks. This will allow us to broaden our thinking and deliberate in the terms of providing ideas for the county as a whole instead of solely, solely the park location. Parks has been furthering this conversation with community leaders since January. Below are some people that expressed interest in joining the potential, uh, the potential committee. Um, and I have a list of individuals that I'm not gonna share all the names, um, but if you are interested in joining or uh, know of somebody, I'd be interested in hearing their name. Um, we would like to discuss how we can move forward this idea and seeking approval at this time. So seeking approval of Friends of Trempolo Parks and moving forward with this idea. Um, as I, I love the idea, I think that's excellent. We talked about it last time, but does this mean that we facilitate this group? Um, no, we start with establishing the creation of the group and then facilitating maybe the first like couple meetings and being there in present or in present. Um, but we want to find um, some key individuals that we can vote in um, once we... So I, I've been tasked with, like, kind of grouping interested individuals, but then at some point we're going to have to figure out a way to make them, like, a 501c3 and then a president, secretary, treasurer. Which the 5013c process can take a year. Yeah, yeah, it's a long process. So you're looking for a motion to... A the creation of such correct given we that we're not really I don't, it feels a little weird to me because if we're only facilitating a couple of the first meetings I'm not really sure that you need that we need to approve say. I think what we're approving is that but when we've talked about it's always been friends of Petrick Park and now we're moving into friends of all the parks you know, to incorporate the parks and leisure areas across the county. As well as, well as like water trail planning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Basically what you're looking for is an organizational startup meeting. Yeah. Yep, sure. And to approve that we're moving beyond just Petrick. Petrick, of course, is our jewel in the center of all of this, but we're going to be involved with, you know, the trails and strum, the champions, all, all the parks and leisure areas in the county. We want people to be friends of the I'll outdoor a, areas in the county. I, I, okay. Make a motion. Yep. yep I'll let's second. Do it. All in favor? Aye. Awesome. Opposed? Aye. Okay. Great. That is great news. Thank you very much, guys. Um, do we go to Rec Pond update? Yeah, we definitely can. <laughs> okay. So um, I kind of made a report. Um, based on that SRF um, findings that it's been a couple months since you guys have heard or seen that those numbers. So I kind of use that uh, PowerPoint that Phil Johnson gave us um, to help sketch out a couple options for Petrick Park um, when it comes to option one being a rec pond and option two being a mixture of needs. Um, this is kind of grouped in with that priorities thing I was talking about last meeting. Um, so um, the first option would be a rec pond. Um, you can, so features include earthwork, a one acre swim pond, a well house, sand beach, gravel riprap edge, um, an earthen beam with native seating, lawn area, changing tables, beach shade structures. Um, so those are all kind of the things that you need uh, for a rec pond. Um, and that total came to, with Phil's findings, 
429,973 to 558,965. Um, this option would leave little to no room for the other phases of the plan, given the circumstances. To make a rec pond, you'll have to think about parking and road upgrades as well. Uh, phase two of the proposed plan will need to happen if, in order to go forward with the rec pond. Um, so the cost estimate for this phase of phase two was between 300769 to 391000 uh, bringing the total for the two up to 838.5 uh, for both phases. An addition of evergreen or spruce screening along the highway to death and noise um, is something Be uh, Becky wanted to see added um, to both plans. So along with that, that plan would be more than a million plus for that okay. phase one or that option one uh, with including a rec pond. Um, Along with additional maintenance, training, and time would make up for a yearly expense and potential issues um, with adding a rec pond. Um, option two is a bit more of a mixture of needs. Um, so I kind of broke down uh, what I liked in the current, current plan that SRF has and added a few Just things to think about. Um, so... One thing I've seen um, at the park, not saying it's not accessible, but it's something that we need to think about um, making everything in all, all walks of recreation services um, available for accessibility. So this would start with the canoe and kayak launch. Um, I got a quote from um, Cooley Region uh, Easy Dock and for the implementation of this plan and to get a new accessible dock, um, it's gonna be anywhere from 15 to 17,000 with it being on a river. Um, river ca canoe and kayak launches, you have to, have to float it up um, yeah. and provide anchors around the trees. Um, so it does add a little bit more, twice the cost, I'd say, um, for, with being on a river. Um, there is also like the, the old style like you see at Cross Road, um, doing cattle panels and that type of thing. I wouldn't define that as an accessible dock. Someone with a wheelchair couldn't use something like that to get down. Right. They could get down there, but getting in their kayak is a whole different story. Mm -hmm. If you have an accessible dock with railings, it gives you that opportunity. Um, Along with this plan, looking at our current facilities like our lower shelter, cloths, and the bathrooms, I had anywhere up to 200 and 400,000 to get them up to code and get them running the way um, they're supposed to be. The lower shelter hasn't been revised since 1987. That's when that went in there. Um, so there's some serious um, work. Mm -hmm. There's some serious work that needs to be done with that shelter. Um, Kloss, we're kind of working on some mishmash of things, and I'd say our existing restrooms need to be totally modified. Um, so those are all going to be huge price price, price things, and, and that's something that we need to re-communicate with the SRF if we want to go kind of this route. Um, and the last thing that I would want to highlight with this plan um, is the addition of a potential bridge that goes over the river. Um, this is kind of a huge cost, and that cost wasn't discussed um, with you guys at the meeting. We kind of left that cost of phase three out. Um, but for something in the long lines of a new bridge that spans, um, I think it was anywhere from 90 to 100 feet to cross the river um, at a designated point, um, it was anywhere between 800 to 900,000. Um, so with these three things, a bridge, existing facilities, and a new accessible canoe and kayak launch, um, along with evergreen or spruce screening along the highway, that total came to a million one six, one million one hundred and sixty six hundred thousand um, for those three things. Um, so both plans are going to be a million plus, um, but if you're taking kind of segments and phases and reworking that with SRF, that can all, 
I'll help with the plan. Um, but Becky, if you have anything to add, I'd be interested to hear. Yeah, one thing we had talked about, so this was an internal discussion in Buzz that we um, <clears throat> met and, and put all of these things on the table and discussing the needs that are all there and, and the other option of the um, outdoor play area, that possibility of mm -hmm. hills yeah, yeah. with slides mm -hmm. and and doing some of that as well. And so the interest really, and as well as talking about ponds, and I was just bringing forward and saying there are um, a couple of those types of ponds in the south um, east region of the state where I'm more from that they're actually filling in now. Um, just because of the extended costs and maintenance and things that come along with that. And looking at safety and things that also are of concern when you start talking about um, putting in something like this. And I think just long-term care on, a, on something like that has me um, more concerned. So anyway, we as a group really felt more leaning toward a lot of the repairs and things that we needed to upgrade, but also on the hill type of play area for children with the slide piece and things that would be really fun and, and able to promote kind of along with the hills throughout the rest of the region. Um, the uh, I think what what came as a you know Buzz's perspective was good to have in thinking about what has already been like shared with communities and I wasn't a lot of us weren't sure about the the procedures that have already gone into process with you know people really wanting maybe the outdoor swim piece but in talking with um, Lori and you know I haven't met with the the other um, pond area but I mean there are some opportunities right to promote what they're doing and um, have op open opportunities for the public to use those and that we could support that in tourism rather than taking that on but I know and just speaking with Lori as well that they also did state that there's a lot of maintenance and you know and, and the safety piece that we have to be concerned about and thinking about that mm -hmm. yeah and I know I know after um, there was some discussion outside of the meeting you know that um, that had occurred I honestly think that we've got a natural river going through the park and uh, maximizing the use of that would probably yeah. be the first mm -hmm. and step as far as water as far as doing mm -hmm. anything with water would go which to me would I guess I'm a little bit on this option too I'm a little bit confused I like what you have laid out here but I'm a I don't like that we don't have laid out here anything to do with the children's upgrading the children's yeah. play space yeah. oh yeah I, and that's, or, that's a that's an area I, I meant to add naturalistic ideas and I forgot to add and or the only other thing that I would think I would like to have us consider, and I don't know where it would fit with the expense, would be to create the riverbank, some some section of the riverbank to allow for more of a beach entrance and feel to it mm -hmm. um, as, instead of pursuing the rec pond, because then we could maximize use of the river potentially mm -hmm. rather than create something that's not natural. I, right. I would think, I don't know, I'm not much of the cost doing what you're saying, maybe creating some kind of beach would be a lot cheaper, not only up front, but long term than a right. duck pan. Cheaper option. And I really have flip flopped in my, you know, to change your mind is a, not a bad thing. Um, you know, we were all interested in the rec pond, but I think we weren't th thinking of, you know, 2025, 2026 and the maintenance and the cost of that. Um, but don't know. our don't know. children's play area is in desperate need because I don't even think what we currently have there is accessible or safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think we'd be focusing on those naturalistic ideas, and a lot of this would have to go back to contracting with SRF, like these ideas that we talked right. about. Yep. Um, that we'd bring them right. to SRF, and yeah. we'd have that conclude our kind of contract and if if I can say something about the SRF contract and I, I've shared this with Jack and Becky but the committee may not know this so last fall you approved a contract of up to thirty five thousand dollars with SRF and it was to do <clears throat> um, design engineering for the rec pond um, come up with a concept plan for the play areas 
and then do a bridge location study, not do any kind of engineering work at all for a bridge, but simply look at where would it make the most sense and be the most cost effective to put a bridge crossing. So um, to date of that 35,000, we've spent about $13,000. And that included, um, that included a site survey of the entire area from the rec pond through the play areas and stuff like that. So that's good, that's, that's not wasted money at all. Um, obviously part of that expense in $13,000 was getting the design concepts put together and some ideas of what the quantities would be for bidding it out. <clears throat> and then they've done some limited work up to this point on the play area concepts and the bridge location. But we put, um, I put that on hold, that contract, back in February while we paused to look at this. And I haven't got one recently, but up until a couple of weeks ago, I was getting weekly emails from Phil Johnson at SRF saying, where are we at? Yeah. And I'm like, we're taking our time, we're reevaluating. Um, <clears throat> we'll have to take a look as, as, as to whether that contract is salvageable or whether we just terminate that contract and do a new one based on the direction that the committee comes up with. I, I don't know what the right answer is, yeah, because there's certain elements of it that you know sounds like they might still go forward. Yeah, I was relatively certain when we had decided to go with them. One of the reasons we decided to go with them was because they were going to do that full scope survey, not just the pond. So include the pond, yes, but they were going to look at the full scope. Right. right. Yeah. So I should think that that contract. I mean, I, d I guess we'd have to ask him. Uh, you know, now that we've kind of changing our direction, yeah. to ensure that the contract does still meet our needs. But I suspect it should. Do you have, Lori, do you have some, did you I want to say? One of the things that um, I was wondering about, and maybe um, uh, SRF can help us with this, but is there some, um, a little bit of a, a group that we could get together, like with the 4-H group and that kind of thing, so that we could maybe ask for some of their, you know, ideas or input, like what would they like to see there? Um, can they contribute to helping some of that? Um, I, would, I would guess some of those associations would be happy to help out with some mm -hmm. little things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think we have anything that is um, accessible that I know of no, not in enough. Tremplo County for, or actually in anywhere, this, anywhere that I'm aware of for the canoes. And I just think that's huge. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. the canoe business itself is, and please don't take me wrong because we're not doing it, but it's because I don't know it. And I usually try not to get into businesses I don't know. But <laughs> this, this is, uh, I know that it's a huge uh, want and probably need, and that might be an area that we could just really right. go crazy on because we could be the only one. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, much of it as the kayak piece of the of it. Right, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. And, and it is really more kayaks than it is canoes now at all. One, one other loose end. Um, that I don't think anybody else has mentioned, <clears throat> but I think everybody should be aware of, is the rec pond is what we were going to develop on the Shank property. Right. And that did come with strings that said something shall be developed on that by the end of this year. And again, I've had conversations with them and said we were proceeding towards the rec pond. I, I don't think they want their property back, but we need to have communication Some with kind of him about you know, the fact that we've we've reached a crossroads, we're taking a look at other options and Well one great yeah. thing to be able to do really quickly would be to do something like um, the Gaga ball that you guys oh, have right. kind of come on. That is so simple and easy and cheap and and no problem at all. You how about, how about if we build a pickleball court there? There are are there any pickleball courts in this county? Uh, there actually there are not. We're we're actually looking at it just because it it's is so, super popular. It is so big, but yes. that's just something that popped in my head just this minute, and I've had to blurt it out. I but do <laughs> I do understand that the tennis courts in Blair were changed to pickleball courts. Oh, okay. Oh. But you know, some place to look, Jack. As far as like when you were talking, Lori, about engaging other people, Oliva Strum has that whole part of their school yeah. they they build things they yes, they yes. refurbished yeah, they a yes. van to make it handicap accessible like an i mean ace academy type thing yes yeah. Yeah. It's they're like it's actually craig that well. puts that whole program if, together. if you're okay then uh, moving forward for the next meeting we would um 
work with Dave and Jack and myself and Amy, and, and we would put together then bringing forward a plan of action on how to move cool. it cool. forward, if that's okay. We, I trust Absolutely. you guys. Yes. Okay. This, this is our last meeting with this group. Who knows what it will be after mm -hmm. April 15th, but 16th. Good place to start over, but my concern would be that if we're going to look at that shank property as an entity, uh -huh. that that be shop to SRF. Absolutely. Uh, what's the yep. new concept design there? If it's going to be more passive mm -hmm. recreation, right. putting the hill, putting whatever, how can yes. we best utilize that area yep. for the park and pitch that to Phil and see what he gives you back? And if that only gets us halfway there, then the committee, I guess, has to decide on another contract or a contract upgrade of some sort. We could go to the university, university, yeah, because that's one of that's the, one what, of that's the one of their do. big areas. And I asked Amy to send that PowerPoint to all you guys. So, I mean, I was just like blown away by him today, partly because he's so full of positive energy, which just made me happy, but. Actually, even for that shank property, just right now, if we've got a you know kind of a agenda like on the back burner or some put a buffer st uh, strip of trees in there right now, I mean we get trees are going to yeah, be yeah, here they're during gonna be there no matter which trees are going to be mm -hmm. here in a month, yeah, right. mm -hmm. and there's always extra trees. And basically, how those trees got planted now, these guys have been planting trees in their gardens. All them trees that got put into that new campground there were all what guys from Independence had started in their gardens, and they just got transferred out there. So you put the trees in, so when you had the rest of it, the trees were at least partially grown up already. And, then, and it's the same you, difference there. You were like reading my mind, because that's one of the things we talk about as being really important in front of that railroad track. Mm, right. some and I ordered 35 Tamaracks, and I'm sure I'm not gonna be able to fit them all in my yard. So I can donate some Tamaracks to the park. But, you know, okay. that might be another thing that you guys can think about is, are there things that businesses would be willing to do, you know, that this tree has got, you know, came from wherever or what or whatever it might be. Or we don't this need Gaga ball setup came from. Right. I you know, love the idea we, of the right Gaga We don't need fancy and... nursery uh, trees out there. Right. I mean, we need native, native trees. And, you if know, what, what a I great project the, for, like, the 4-H and that group. I mean, they probably would love it doing that you know they know about that pickup is april 18th for your trees if you ordered them and they're going to be out at the park again because the guys yep. that said that uh they've got new tables coming for the inside the cloth shelter but they're going to not put them in till after tree uh distribution mm -hmm. is done because they said it's so much easier to have, to have yeah. the trees on the old tables and with the dirt and stuff like right. that versus get getting a new uh, picnic table Right. Dirty. Okay, All right. so do you guys, is everybody happy with how we're moving here? Okay. We need a resolution. No. And then one other thing, Jack, uh, you know, with this playground thing, I thought mm -hmm. we had talked about six months ago that there was possibly some grant money available for playgrounds. I think Doreen Olson had talked about that because she was instrumental in getting some of that for the park in Independence. I'll have to talk to Doreen. Love Actually, that. who came to our meeting? She had the whole book from the Oliva Strom, the Strom Playground behind the church. Big, huge of that came from a grant from the state of Wisconsin. If you go look up um, playground area grants, there's like a thousand of them. Yeah. So. Especially if you get into the sensory area, that's big yep. and easier to get. Oh, too. God, and the one in Strom is just amazing, so. Come and have coffee at the sunrise, and then go check out the playground. Oh, I gotta still give you a tour of our area. Yeah. Well, I know we got a Toronto nice plug selection. last week <laughs> on uh, the Mike Gilbertson show with Stuart Dodge and then uh, Young Bauer. Yeah, they did it about all the years that the fifth and sixth grade kids were going to the park. Oh, that's nice. But he Hopefully. had a live interview with Stuart. Hopefully, there'll be a sixth grade reunion. From all the sixth graders, you know. I heard that idea. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the next meeting will be May seventh. Hopefully, we'll all be here. Who knows? So might be different committee members. Yep. May seventh. Huh? May seventh. May seventh at eight thirty.